I'm attracted to urban design as a broader field that integrates architecture of buildings, the landscape design of, of open spaces, uh, and the basic uh, importance of the larger planning principles that are helping making regions and cities uh, more sustainable and more attractive places to live. As the world is getting more interconnected and the whole urban space represents more about network, it is this network that makes the essential quality of urban spaces. And that is actually what is really essential in uh, Roma's work. Actually, USC has been a place that both given birth to architects like Frank Gehry and Tom Main and, uh, and Boris and Vani. And I'm particularly impressed by what their practice has been uh, representing, which, which is the systematic uh, spatial logic through urban environment instead of singular objects. I think a city should be first and foremost being looked at as a network where uh, Roma's work has been addressing for many years. We select uh, urban infill projects because we feel they provide us the opportunity to address environmental and social issues of cities today and to really deal with the recycling of urban land. But at the end of the day, the public realm of cities is made with people in it. From having just a few people on a daily basis to having a major event with many people in it. So the ability of the public realm to adapt itself to the different temporal aspects of a city is an important characteristic that we do address in the design of our projects. I grew up in Whittier. Boris grew up in Paris and Rio de Janeiro. When I came to USC, there was this guy, uh, Boris, and there was nobody like him in Whittier, that's for sure. We were sitting around in the courtyard at USC, and we were complaining about our professors. And it was interesting that our professors were Craig Elwood and Gregory Ain and Pierre Koenig, Buff Straub, Hensman, uh, Carl Mastin, Ed Killingsworth. But, you know, we, we were complaining. And uh, Boris said, you know, um, maybe we, we ought to go to Europe and see what's going on over there. In modern architecture, uh, you totally ignored history and you totally ignored uh, creating great urban spaces. It just wasn't part of the formula. But when we would go on these trips and, and see these just marvelous places, you would say, well, hey, what about that kind of space and it really caused us to think beyond the building but he took those ideas and really focused on them. They were pioneers then. Boris was a leader that I remember hearing about before I actually met and there were very few people in the country who were interested in urban design particularly urban design that honored our historic traditions of city building and the idea of mixed-use and walkable communities. He was one of the people that kept that alive as a practice, as a profession. He also has that rare quality, and I think urban designers are rare to begin with. You know, they have to deal with everything simultaneously, uh, whether it's planning codes or traffic engineering or water systems, energy systems, but more often uh, they have to deal with the social qualities of public spaces. And, uh, you know, being sensitive to all those things simultaneously and rendering something of great power, visual power, and placemaking strength uh, is a tall challenge. Very few people really are capable of it. And Boris is one of the finest practitioners I know in that, in that domain. I think another part of his strength was that focus on San Francisco, understanding what made it great, what, the, what, what constituted the appropriate city fabric in urban spaces. Certainly, the Embarcadero Freeway was a deep scar on the face of the city. And when it came down, it was, you know, we all are thankful there was somebody as talented as Boris there to help shape the, the grand boulevard that replaced that absurd freeway. What was before was a, an, a more abundant industrial area, which you could 
barely drive through because there were so many tracks and there was a freeway and certainly wasn't an attractive place to walk or bike. That has been transformed into probably the most attractive part of San Francisco for both locals and tourists. So it's a great, great realization. Plus, we have restored the ferry building and re restored the ferry so service. Was and really and right on was the designer of those ferry terminals. Pioneer. So the South Beach neighborhood was a, a really powerful effort in bringing urbanism back in an area where there's, there was very little development, where there had to be a lot of redevelopment, and where it could have fallen prey to all the ridiculous paradigms of sprawl. Uh, he extended the city back into those areas and made it uh, a seamless connection. When you look at South Beach and the South of Market, and what you see is a city that literally transformed itself in a short eight to 10 year period. Porus was very much a part of that. Whether it was the ballpark or Mission Bay, he was there being the advocate, being the expert, being the well-respected urban environment design guy. If you would have seen Sassoon City in that state, it was such a blight. You know, it was a social blight, economic blight, and a visual blight. And it was very difficult to get businesses to either have any interest in locating there. Nobody could really see it for what it could be. They all saw it for what it was. And so we had interviewed uh, Boris and Roma group, and, and that interview, they were just head and shoulders over everyone else. Really, what, what they were proposing uh, really fit for our community. What the city really didn't think was important at the time was, and, and this is something that uh, Boris and, and Roma really drove home, is we have to have public spaces. And if there's one thing that we put into this community that the citizens of Sassoon and Fairfield both really appreciate is that public plaza. It's used all the time. And it was one of the last things the city was thinking about because we were thinking everything had to be commercial. And so uh, those are the types of elements that really uh, were Roma brought into it. The other was the promenade that runs around the whole waterfront. And any, you, you can't go down there any day now where people aren't walking or participating in that public corridor through there. That was something that the city hadn't thought about either. And so we didn't, we didn't understand that continuity, how you tie all these things together. And as businesses are locating down there, that promenade now is the common thread that brings everybody together. Uh, those are the types of elements that Boris really brought to this project. And he clearly had that vision. And so through good design, we were able to really make a big difference on the community. One thing Sassoon didn't have was a lot of pride, but once that waterfront went in, people were bragging about where they lived. They were coming down, and uh, our first 4th of July, once the project was finished, we had uh, over 25,000 people on that waterfront. You couldn't even move. It was more than the population of the city. And so whether it's the San Francisco waterfront or a small harbor in Sassoon City, that attention to the detail and the relationship between water and public space and, and town or city uh, is something that he excels at. We've been fortunate at DMB to have an opportunity to work with the finest design professionals currently practicing. Boris was such a breath of fresh air to us with a new vision, a different way of looking at problems, a much more international approach. But are we going to have this great environment and are we going to have the opportunity for reconnecting Redwood City in a more positive manner with the Bay and the community? This is the site placed over historic Amsterdam. Just to give you a sense of scale, this is a huge site. It's a really big site. Okay, let me go back. This is 1930. There is salt works out there, but look at the relationship of your community to the bay. And today, you know, it's really cut off. And it's what really- What we found with, with Boris is a shared passion for looking hard at the detail and projecting, even at the very earliest stage of the design, what the execution is ultimately going to be and how the project is ultimately going to live and feel to the people who occupy it at completion. And Boris's willingness and, and really enthusiasm for a collaborative process, just a perfect fit for us. Well, our time with Boris on the San Diego uh, Sports and Entertainment District and the, the Ballpark Village um, planning process was where Boris really had to apply immense creativity in coming up with multiple ideas of how uses could be mixed, how transportation could be organized, and how 
really a um, vastly underdeveloped 